to our agenda. And Jean, why don't we just jump down a little bit to your, to your item, and that would concern the presentation by uh, Mark Burns with regard to the uh, gas supply program and the need to re-execute the master service agreement. And with that, Mark, we would uh, turn over the floor to you. Sure. Why don't you introduce yourself? I know some of these people know you and some of them don't, but why don't you introduce yourself and give a background and Absolutely. tell us what you tell us every couple of years. Hi, thank you, Commissioner Burnaby. Uh, Mark Burns, President of Independent Energy Consultants. My firm's licensed as a broker and aggregator of natural gas and electricity by the PUCO and a number of other states as well. We serve um, over 100 communities across Ohio and now even in Illinois with these government aggregation programs we run. And uh, today uh, we're going to talk about the natural gas aggregation program for your residents and small commercial customers in the 17 unincorporated uh, townships of Stark County. We have a program that's going to be expiring um, at the end of October, so we had to go back out for bid as we do every couple of years invite all the eligible suppliers to bid on your business, analyze those bids, present them to Ms. Young, and then come back to the board and um, explain our recommendation. And uh, before I get into the, the, the bids, um, just an update on where you stand right now. You have over 25,000 accounts participating in your aggregation program. So that uh, shows the popularity of the program. Enrollment remains very high. Uh, if we go back to approximately 2009, your residents have saved over $16 million by having this aggregation program. Um, we always say it doesn't make anyone rich or change their lifestyle, but that does mean you know, an extra $150 that are left in their pocket to spend on other things uh, because you folks make it possible by doing these aggregation programs. Uh, it's this concept of bulk buying. We can always find rates better than an individual resident can get it there any, at any moment in time uh, because of the way um, suppliers acquire those customers. If we get into the um, actual bidding process, I mentioned we invited all eligible suppliers. In um, Stark County, you have two major utilities operating, Dominion East Ohio and Columbia Gas. Uh, I mentioned you have over 25,000 families, so that's roughly 75,000 people impacted by uh, the aggregation program. Most of those are in the Dominion East Ohio service territory, so over 23,000. And then in Columbia, a um, smaller pocket of about 1,500 accounts. Um, so when we get pricing, we get pricing for each of those two utility service territories, you need cost to serve there. Um, when we get pricing, they came in uh, several weeks ago. You're a government entity by design. You can't make decisions you know, on a moment's notice. So what we actually broker is a formula. Um, where we look at wholesale energy prices and they move up and down, they're moving as I speak right now, and then we tack on what's called a retail adder, and that's what the suppliers are willing to offer to cover their costs of interstate pipeline, transmission, their overhead, their profit, their cost of mailing, you name it, it all gets bundled into that retail adder. So what we're asking the commissioners to do today is to pass a resolution um, accepting our recommendation to go with IGS Energy, your current provider, for an additional two years. The formulas um, that they've given us to set rates for Columbia and Dominion East Ohio are more attractive than the formulas that you have from your current program that have served your residents really well. Right now, your residents are paying $4.64 in MCF. If you went out to the apples to apples chart on the PUCO's website and looked at offers that residents can get on their own, this um, uh, formula that we have for your program and current rates produce rates that are much better than what a resident can get. Also, uh, with your program, you have no early termination fee. That means a resident can leave at any time for any reason free of charge. Once again, if they're out there trying to sign their own contracts individually, those early termination fees can approach $150. Um, we had five suppliers bid Constellation New Energy, Dominion Retail, Energy Company of America, a new entry into the marketplace, IGS Energy, your incumbent supplier, and Volunteer Energy. Um, I'm looking at slide seven if um, our handouts are the same. And once again, you know, we're looking at these supplier offers, and we look at a number of things. If you move over to slide eight, actually, or not eight, but slide uh, 10. Um, when we look at these bids come in, um, Gene will tell you firsthand, you know, um, you want to work with a supplier who's got a very good call center um, so that your residents, when they have questions, 
or talking to someone professionally who can answer questions um, so that they're not calling Gene and bugging the commissioners. You know, your folks are not getting into the utility business. That's the role of the supplier. Um, and we look at things like, you know, their ability to bill customers, their experience with government aggregation, um, their ability to meet time constraints. Can they print letters accurately? Can they, you know, send letters just into these 17 townships and, instead of flooding the city of Canton who has their own aggregation program? So when you put all of that together, IGS was by far um, the lowest bidder and the best overall bidder in the scoring process. Um, what we're looking um, to do is to get a resolution, hopefully passed before the end of July. So if it happens today, that's great. What that means is we would then have those formulas in place um, for me to start working with Jean. I uh, send her weekly price quotes and say, look, if you wanted to you know, set a rate for your gas for the next 12 months, here's what your pricing would be today. Those wholesale energy markets will continue to move. Um, the following week, I'll send another set of price quotes in and say, Here's where your gas could be, you know, if you wanted to lock in today. And then at some point, if I don't get feedback from the uh, county saying, Mark, we like those rates, go ahead and buy gas, I'll come to you with a recommendation saying, I think, you know, prices are about as low as they're going to get in the time period we have to make a decision. So that decision on, you know, we set it up, we accept a supplier, get a formula, we put it in our pocket, we start looking at that formula all the time to see what rates would be, and then we execute that formula to set a rate that will be offered to your residents. Uh, programs are voluntary. We've got two groups of residents. Those current participants, they would be automatically re-included. They would get a letter um, probably in late September that says, here's your new offer. You're about to be added you know, to or kept in the program unless you opt out of the program during a 21-day period. At the same time, we'll have another letter that goes out and looks very similar. It says, you know, if you'd like the offer that your you know, neighbors in Stark County are receiving, you've got to take action. Um, you've got to pick up the phone, call the supplier, go to a website, return this business reply card to proactively join it. That second letter would be sent to people that have already chosen a supplier on their own. You commissioners can't be in the business of interfering with a contract that one of your residents has already freely entered into. So that's why the two types of letter. The group of people, you know, they get an opt-out letter, they're not under contract with another supplier, and then people that are, are invited to proactively join. Um, once again, these letters would go out in probably late September, um, and it's all designed to have gas flowing under the new rates come November 1st. So I know you have a four-page agenda, so that's about as fast as I can kind of get through this. How have these rates perform against the traditional just variable rate? Did whatever the going rate is, I mean, is there a comparison out there? Yeah, when you Because I, I know the price of gas moves around, especially now with all the activity that's going it, on. It, it does. Um, and I tried to show in a, you know, a historical look at gas prices. Um, I remember when I was here before, we were negotiating 12 and 14 dollars. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and that's what you're seeing on this chart on page three. It was, you know, rather a painful experience to have that commodities bubble back in 2007, 2008 time frame. Um, you know, at that time, for the first time since the 70s, we saw money flowing out of the equity markets into the commodities markets. Didn't matter if you were trying to buy silver, copper, pork bellies, lumber, asphalt for your road projects, commodities had just gone crazy. In that environment, we would tell people, look, you know, this is painful, but this bubble's gonna burst and come down further and faster than it went up. That's the environment where you would wanna go with a variable price and ride that back down. If you look at that chart now, we've kind of put in a floor and we see prices, um, you know, about as low as we think they can go. Suppliers have stopped drilling at these prices because they can't simply make money or they'll take natural gas rigs, redeploy them for um, crude oil, something with a higher profit margin. If we look at the big issues on the macro picture, we look at um, you know, the state of Vermont, um, New York, uh, they had a, either a ban or a moratorium on fracking, uh, the process that you know five years ago we didn't think we had enough gas. Now with Marcellus and Utica, their household names, we are now the Saudi Arabia of natural gas. Um, if we had a ban on fracking, we would see prices go skyrocketing. I'm not saying there's one imminent, 
Ohio mm -hmm. tends to be a supporter of this technology, great jobs maker. Um, the other things that are going on is we do have a war on coal in this country. Um, so where we continue to retire older um, coal-fired generation plants that produce power, we're not building any new nuclear power plants, so everybody's turning to natural gas to create electricity. That's putting upward pressure on natural gas. The transportation sector is looking at these low prices we've had for the last several years. And uh, city bus fleets, um, UPS, the guys in brown shorts, their entire fleet is converting to compressed or liquefied natural gas. Um, five years ago, when we didn't think we had enough natural gas, we were building import facilities, 15 of them around the U.S., where people from the Middle East would liquefy it, pull it to minus 273, bring it into this country, we warm it up, put it into our pipes. That met about 3% of our demand. These same 15 facilities that were import only are export. now being retrofitted for export. So, you know, a year from now, two years from now, we might start seeing price signals from Asia. Japan had the terrible nuclear accident. Um, so their nuclear fleet shut down. They import all their energy needs. You know, if people over there are paying $10 in MCF and we're paying $4, We'll start to see a little leveling of that. Right now, gas is a domestic product kept here, but we could start seeing some international pressures. Bottom line is we're at very attractive pricing. Most of, even the very large industrials I work with see this as an opportunity to lock in fixed rates. When you lock in fixed rates, your residents are protected. Rates won't go any higher than that. And if the market were to fall and there's better opportunities, We've always structured it so they can leave any time for any reason free of charge. So, a lot of the answer. Yeah. <laughs> he loves energy, doesn't he? Yeah, he loves he loves energy. Energy. I, I just want to note for the record, by the way, oh, yeah. that, that when Commissioner Regular was here negotiating the rate for <laughs> well, 13, uh, 13 uh, to $14, to no under Commissioner Brewer, they were approximately $4. That's right. Okay. Commissioner. Well, thank great. you. Yeah. Yes, that's right. I think we have the right, don't we? Yes, yes. Oh, um, do we have the, I did not see the, here is the resolution. Uh, move to approve a resolution to enter into a master service agreement with Interstate Gas Supply Incorporated to serve the Stark County Natural Gas Aggregation Program. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the master service agreement that as stated, is there any discussion? Again, Mr. Burns, we thank you for your presentation, for your work in this area. I do have a question. How many other uh, aggregation programs, gas aggregation programs, are there in Star County? Uh, let's see. We personally serve North Canton, Canton, Massillon. These are separate or combined? Those are all separate. You have the 17 unincorporated townships, okay. villages, and cities have to have their own. They have to by statute? Yes. Yes. So there's no way to combine everybody's in the Nah, you're, you're a big buying group, though, you know, with 17 townships. Okay. Again, we have a motion to second that. We'll prove the aggregation. It should be pointed out that it was 2004 when this aggregation program passed. <laughs> don't worry about it. So yeah. that, that, that's it. And, and that would be the rates were 29. They were 18. Okay, we were on the 14. So. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> uh, if there's no other discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, and again, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner.